Welcome to the Saddlestone Connemara Pony Listening School series with Fiona and Foxtrot. Nine-year-old Fiona lives in Kildare with her beloved Connemara pony Foxtrot. She dreams of earning a spot on the Irish Young Riders Dressage team. But Fiona's world shatters when she unexpectedly finishes last in the dressage competition at Galway's famous Saddlestone Connemara Pony Listening School. Is Fiona's dream of earning a place on the Irish dressage team over? Or can Foxtrot and Fiona turn things around at Saddlestone with Mrs. Thundercare's help? Follow the captivating journey of Fiona and Foxtrot in this endearing Saddlestone Connemara Pony Listening School adventure. Enjoy a sneak peek of what you can expect inside this book and listen to the first few chapters here. This book is perfect for children aged 6 to 10 years and you can buy the paperback and audiobooks at elaineheaneybooks.com. All right, let's get started. This is the Saddlestone Connemara Pony Listening School, Fiona and Foxtrot. Chapter 1 The sun was just peeking over the green hills of Galway as a large, glossy horse lorry passed through Athloan, Ballina Slow, and then Athenry on its way to the Saddlestone Connemara Pony Listening School. Mum, Dad, Fiona began, looking at her parents in the front seats with a firm expression. This place had better be good, because if it's not good, I'm not going to stay there. Her parents turned to face her, their expressions slightly bemused. Not good enough? her mother asked, her voice gentle yet apprehensive. Right now I'm ranked as one of the top young dressage riders in Kildare, Fiona stated, her tone matter-of-fact. And I fully expect to be picked for the Irish Young Riders dressage team this year. So, I need the best dressage trainers to make that happen. But I've never heard of any international dressage riders from Galway. Fiona Love, we've done our research, her father assured her, glancing at her angry face with a hint of exhaustion in his eyes. Saddlestone has top-notch instructors. That's why we agreed when you found the Golden Saddlestone ticket that you should take this opportunity. But Dad, you have to understand, Fiona pressed on, her voice echoing around the lorry. Foxtrot and I are a winning team. The most important thing is that I get a place on the Irish National Dressers team this year. Nothing else matters. Yes, Fiona, her mother said patiently. We know how important this is to you. And we assure you, we wouldn't have suggested that you go to Saddlestone if we didn't think it was the right fit for you. And the trainers? Fiona asked, her brows furrowing. Are they experienced in dressage? Indeed they are, her father replied. Mr. Gallagher, for one, has decades of experience in horse riding and competitions, and has helped many young equestrians like you reach their potential. And Mrs. Thundercare, the principal, won the Irish Eventing World Championship back in the 80s. She was literally the best in the world, her mum added. Hmm, Fiona mused, eyeing her parents carefully. Well, they better be good, or I won't be happy. Foxtrot deserves the best, and so do I. Fiona, dear, her mother said, a soft smile playing on her lips. You are a talented rider, but remember, it's not just about winning. It's about growing, learning more about Foxtrot, having fun and making friends. This isn't about having fun, Mum. I'm here to win, Fiona replied, her gaze hardening with determination as she looked out the windows at the stone walls and rolling green fields of Galway. Fiona's parents exchanged a tired look between them. They hoped the instructors at Saddlestone were ready for Fiona. Chapter 2 An hour later, the large horse box rolled through the wrought iron gates of Saddlestone. In the still morning air, the clinking of the cattle grid echoed across the school grounds, grabbing the attention of a few early birds among the students. 
her determined face peeked out of the lorry's window. Nine-year-old Fiona took in the view of her new school. The stone walls speckled with ivy, the old sash windows and weathered slate roof. Sheep grazed peacefully in the nearby meadows, their wool shimmering like silver in the soft morning light. In the distance, the glittering surface of a lake beckoned, framed by a scattering of wildflowers. Inside the lorry, Foxtrot, Fiona's magnificent bay Connemara pony, peered curiously out of the window. He was a dressage champion, much like Fiona herself. His coat was gleaming, even in the dull light of the horse box. As the lorry pulled up next to the stable block, a commanding figure emerged from the main building. Mrs. Thundercare, her silver hair neatly tied into a stern bun, surveyed the new arrival with her piercing blue eyes. A sense of authority radiated from her, causing a few watching students to straighten their backs instinctively. Good morning, Fiona, she called, her booming voice resonating through the stillness of the morning. Welcome to Saddlestone. I trust you and Foxtrot's journey was uneventful. Fiona tossed her hair back, meeting Mrs. Thundercare's gaze with a cool stare. It was fine, she replied, her voice confident. Thank you for asking. Excellent, said Mrs. Thundercare, her attention now focused on the large bay Connemara pony, who raised his ears at the sound of his name. This must be Foxtrot, a splendid animal. Fiona, standing tall, placed a hand on Foxtrot's mane. Yes, this is Foxtrot, she said. He's the best dressage pony in Kildare. He's quite used to admiration. There was a pause as Mrs. Thundercare studied Fiona, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. I'm sure he is, she replied. And what are your plans here at Saddlestone, Fiona? Fiona looked Mrs. Thundercare straight in the eye. Mrs. Thundercare, she said, Foxtrot and I are here for one reason only, to qualify for the Irish Young Riders dressage team this year. Mrs. Thundercare raised an eyebrow, her piercing blue eyes sizing up Fiona in silence. After a moment, a smile spread across her face, her eyes twinkling with a mix of surprise and interest. She glanced over at Fiona's parents, smiling. Looks like we've got quite a determined young rider here, don't we? She chuckled. She turned back to Fiona, the smile still playing on her lips. Well, Fiona, I've heard your goal loud and clear and we will certainly do our best to help you achieve it with Foxtrot. To get on the Irish dressage team, there will be a lot for you to learn. Fiona nodded. Well then, Mrs. Thundercare went on, clapping her hands together. It seems we've got quite the busy term ahead of us, Fiona. Now let's get Foxtrot settled in, and I'll get some of our students to show you around. Just then, Two girls around Fiona's age approached, one leading a cute dun pony and the other an adorable grey Connemara. Perfect, said Mrs. Thundercare. Fiona, meet two of our students, Sir Shaw and Orna. Girls, if you would be kind enough to show Fiona where Foxtrot's paddock is and help her bring her bags into Saddlestone, I would appreciate it. Of course, Mrs. Thundercare the tall girl replied. Hi, Fiona, I'm Searsha, said the girl with the chestnut pony. This is Polly. She nodded at the dun pony while extending a hand towards Fiona. And this is Orna and Tassie, she said, pointing at the girl with the grey. Nice to meet you both, Fiona replied, sizing them up. We were just about to bring our ponies out to the paddocks, so you're welcome to bring your pony with us too. Orna said. Fiona glanced at Mrs. Thundercare, who nodded approvingly. Go ahead, Fiona, she said, 
And remember, no breakfast until Foxtrot is fed and watered. With a determined smile, Fiona followed her new friends towards the paddocks. Her adventure at the Connemara Pony Listening School had just begun. All right. Chapter 3 Fiona's first day at Saddlestone School was bright and crisp, the Irish countryside in full bloom. The green grass swayed gently in the breeze, and the air was filled with the sweet scent of horses and hay. When Fiona arrived at the riding arena, she couldn't help but notice another student called Aidan standing beside his wide black and white piebald Irish cob, Bob. I'm so glad I have a much better horse than that, she muttered under her breath. Fiona was used to the best, from her high-end dressage saddle shipped in from Germany to her pricey bridle that glistened in the sunlight. Good morning, everyone, boomed Mr. Gallagher's voice as cheerful as ever. He stood tall in his beloved worn-out boots, his glasses perched on his nose. All right, students, gather around. I'm going to explain the first exercise for today, he announced cheerily. The students walked over close to him with their ponies, their faces a mix of curiosity and anticipation. Even Fiona, despite her initial stumble, looked ready to listen. You see, Mr. Gallagher began, I want to explain why it's really important for your horse to stand still on a loose rein once you're in the saddle at the start of every lesson. It's about safety and communication. He gestured towards the nearest saddle, picking up a stirrup. First, Standing still gives you time to check your stirrups are the correct length. He dropped the stirrup and touched the saddle's girth. And the girth? That needs checking too. If it's too loose, well, you might just end up under your horse instead of on top, he chuckled, his laughter echoed by the group. You'll also need to check that your saddle hasn't slipped to the right or left when you get on. Those are the tack safety checks. But standing still is also about your horse listening to you, he continued, his tone serious now. Imagine if you sit in the saddle and straight away your horse starts walking or trotting away with you. That's not just scary, it's dangerous. Plus, it shows that your pony isn't connected to you. They have started the lesson by ignoring you and doing their own thing. And we don't want that, do we? A chorus of no, Mr. Gallagher, rang out. Exactly, he affirmed, beaming at them. Fiona crossed her arms. It all sounded fairly easy. Remember, you and your horse are a team. A horse that walks off when you mount isn't a naughty horse. It's just a horse that you haven't trained properly yet. You need to communicate, and that before you sit in the saddle. So let's have a go, shall we? With that, the students scattered back to their ponies, a renewed sense of purpose in their steps. They were eager to apply what they had learned. Chapter 4 Each student had to mount their horse at the mounting block and once seated, ask the horse to stand still for 20 seconds on a loose rein. Searsha and her Dun Connemara Pony Polly were up first. They walked over to the mounting block. Searsha walked up the steps and gently swung her leg over the saddle and sat down gently. Then she stood there for twenty seconds. All the time, Polly was very relaxed and didn't move a hoof. Searsha had a smile in her reins as Polly stood still. Look at that, Mr. Gallagher said, spreading his hands out as if presenting a marvel. Just observe, everyone. Twenty seconds and Polly hasn't budged. This is what we are aiming for. Searsha smiled at Polly, patting her neck. Good girl. Super, Searsha. Great work. I want your pony to have the choice to move or stand still. Your pony will make the decision because your reins have some slack in them. Polly did really well and was happy to stand still for you. 
You can ask her to walk on now, said Mr. Gallagher. Fiona watched as they completed the task with ease. Next up were Orna and her horse Tassie. She walked up the steps on the mounting block and then sat in the saddle with a loose rein. After ten seconds, Tassie took a step forwards. OK, Orna, Mr. Gallagher called out, his voice gentle yet firm. Could you ask Tassie to step backwards just one step, please? Orna moved her shoulders back a little, gently closed her fingers on the reins and thought about going backwards. Back, Tassie, she whispered softly. Tassie responded immediately, taking one carefully measured step backwards. Mr. Gallagher's eyes twinkled behind his glasses. That's it, Orna, he praised. Lovely! A small cue and a soft voice. That's all it takes. Next, Orna loosened her reins, the leather sliding a little through her hands. Stand, Tassie, she said, her voice still calm and gentle. One second passed, then two. Tassie stayed still, the only movement being her chest rising and falling softly with her breath. Orna and Tassie relaxed together, an unspoken understanding passing between them. Look at that, Mr. Gallagher said, spreading his hands out as if presenting a marvel. Just look, everyone. Twenty seconds and Tassie hasn't budged. This is what we are aiming for. It's fine for your pony to make a choice we don't want. What is important is that we are good teachers and we can kindly explain to the ponies what we want and them tell them they are wonderful when they figure out what we want. Orna smiled at Tassie, rubbing her neck. Good girl, Tassie. Indeed, Mr. Gallagher added. A job well done, Orna and Tassie. Fiona watched with growing impatience. Finally, it was her turn. With an air of confidence, Fiona approached the mounting block with Foxtrot. The moment she sat in the saddle, Foxtrot immediately started to walk forwards. Easy, Foxtrot, Fiona said her tone slightly embarrassed. No worries, Fiona, Mr. Gallagher assured her. Walk Foxtrot back around to the mounting block again and have him stand beside it. Then give him a loose rein. Fiona did as instructed, but within two seconds of stopping at the mounting black, Foxtrot walked forwards by himself again. Ask him to step back two steps, please, Fiona, Mr. Gallagher instructed. Fiona tried to ask Foxtrot to step back, but Foxtrot found it hard to understand and started to walk forwards even more. Fiona could feel Foxtrot pulling forwards on the reins. It's okay, Fiona. This is something new that Foxtrot needs to learn. We'll work on that over the next few days, said Mr. Gallagher, his tone understanding and patient. Fiona sighed, a little flustered. She was used to always being the best, but this was proving more challenging than she expected. Then Mr. Gallagher gave Fiona a last instruction. In today's lesson, every time you give Foxtrot a rest, I would like you to stand Foxtrot still beside the mounting block. This way, Foxtrot will start to associate the mounting block with being able to relax and stand still. Looking around at her new friends and their obedient ponies, Fiona's jaw set with determination. Yes, today's lesson hadn't been what she'd hoped for, but it wasn't a fair test of Foxtrot's skills, she thought. Foxtrot was a dressage horse, bred for sophisticated movements and elegant performances. This? This was just small stuff that wouldn't be that important once she made the Irish dressage team. A sigh escaped her lips as she watched the other students' ponies standing quietly at the mounting block, but she was optimistic. Her eyes held a glimmer of anticipation for the coming days, when the real training would start. Once they see us in action, Foxtrot, they'll know! They'll see we're the best, she promised, her voice filled with certainty. 
Fiona shot a final glance at the mounting block, her face set in determination. All they needed was a chance to show everyone what they were truly capable of. When that moment came, it would take Saddlestone by surprise. Just remember we're here to win, Fiona whispered to Foxtrot. I hope you enjoy the first few chapters of Fiona and Foxtrot and the Saddlestone Connemara Pony Listening School. You can buy the paperback book and full audiobook at elaineheaneybooks.com.